for today I a bit hesitating we finished uh, momentum transport already right but the other two sections have not and I just realized that I still have one week that's mean this class and the next class to talk about momentum transport okay unfortunately next week I have to cancel two classes because I'm going abroad so either I go ahead and cover energy transport right now or give you some examples today and I will start energy transport on Thursday all right um, last class we talked about chapter 6 which is calculation of friction factor but I did not give you any example so I think it might be a good idea to give you a glimpse of examination problems this is one of them okay so for today I think I will start with examination past examination problems and if we can f finish this one a little bit earlier we will start on energy transport if not we will spend one and a half hour on this problem all right so please copy the uh, problem statement the official one looks like this Conceptually, it looks like what on the board. Okay. And instead of trying to give you the solution right away. I think it would be a good idea to let you start on your own a, a little and I would give you a guide from time to time okay so you're done with the problem statement okay now there's several problems small problems in this one there are four actually the first one problem a asking about average velocity basically this is a pipe okay oh by the way in chapter six we talk about friction factor we talk about the the term that link between microscopic balance and macroscopic balance in macroscopic balance we consider in and out right and we put friction factor term in the balance and in general the two kinds of problems about flow if I write this board there are two kind of problems okay first one is called flow in channel like flow in a pipe in a circular pipe anything flow in confined channel the channel can be confined can be open like a duct you can flow in the duct that's flow in channel as well the other one is called flow around submerged object okay this is also a transport phenomena regarding a momentum transport this second part or second kind of problems is like when you have particles falling down or if you have if you imagine it's easier you have particle with gravity force mass of the particles basically particles try to fall down 
right? If I provide fluid flowing around particles like this, To keep this particle suspended in fluid, velocity of the fluid, approaching velocity here with infinity, supposed to be fast enough to sustain this particle. This situation is called fluidization, right? If the velocity is too fast, the particle will be carried up. That's called terminal velocity. You have learned this in unit operation one. In fluidization, if I focus on one, only one particle, let's say particle is a spherical, you have velocity here, the fluid cannot go through the particle, so it's go around it. This is flow around submerged object, okay? So if you consider the flow pattern around this object, we can use transport phenomena as well, and we can calculate what we call as uh, something like friction factor around this object, but in general, it, it is called drag force, okay? This, is, this can be applied either in fluidization or in sedimentation. If you have particles falling down in the fluid, sediment, sedimentation is falling or particles down. If you put your axis on the particles and your axis move along with the particles, particles seem to be still, and fluid seems to go approaching particle as well. So you get this picture eventually, all right? So two kinds. Inflow in the channel. Last time we talked about this um, formula, F equal to A, K, F. I told you that this is the only equation in chapter six, right? This is um, characteristic area, characteristic kinetic energy, and friction factor equal to shear stress, uh, force applied to the surface. This is force at the interface between fluid and, uh, fluid and solid. In flow in channel, the area here is normally wetted area. It's the area that liquid wet the channel. Basically, it's the inner surface area of the pipe. For flow around submerged object, this area is not the area of the particles because it is difficult to imagine. I mean, the force acting on the, on the front part and the back part of the particles are not the same. So we, it, is, it, it is improper to use the overall surface area of the particles. This characteristic area for this kind of flow is normally a projected area. If you project this area down, and if this particle is spherical, this area is basically a circle, okay? So inflow around submerged object characteristic area is usually calculated based on the projected area. And this term, friction factor, in this case will be called drag force. Okay. In our examples, our exam problems, this one is a flow in the channel, but the channel is not circular. It is triangle, triangular. And the channel is defined by three points A, B, C. If you look in front of it, you see this picture. The triangle is symmetry. Okay. The triangle is defined by three equations. If this line, AC line, is defined by y equal to square root three of x. This line would be the same except you put the negative sign, it's opposite. On top is a constant y equal to x, okay? The first task that it asks, to, asks you to do is calculating average velocity. Given that the velocity profile is here along with, uh, as shown here, this is velocity profile, and this is how we can calculate cross-section area, okay? How do we do it?
How do we do it? How do we calculate average velocity? We know that average velocity is usually calculated by double integration of velocity over cross-section area. Right? This is what we normally do. Now, let me ask you this. Double integration here is supposed to be integrated with respect to what? In this problem, velocity is going perpendicular to the screen, that z direction. x and y is going this way. In this particular problem, origin point is defined here. So this is y. This is x. And going this way is z. OK? So integration, usually we integrate perpendicular to the flow, right? The area that we integrate would be integration perpendicular to the flow. So in this case, you integrate vz, the area that per is perpendicular to this vc is supposed to be x and y. Right? Now, it was given that the cross-section area here is here. If you look closely and try to understand the meaning of this equation, you see that this is 2. That means the integration or the double, double integration in this part is basically calculation of this area. It is integrated with respect to x first from 0 to x equal to y over square root 3. That means it starts from x equal to 0 end up at x equal to y over square root 3. That's here. Okay, so you integrated this area. And of course, this red area and the blue area will be the same. Right? And then, you integrate with respect to y from y equal to 0 to y equal to h. That means you integrate this way. So that equation defi is defining this red area. You double it, you get the area of the triangle. OK? So if we want to integrate this one, how would you put it? Of course, if you do the integration here, you get 2 integral 0 to h. Inside, you get x from 0 to y over square root 3 dy. OK? Plug this back in here, you get integration of y over square root 3 dy from 0 to h. Integrate it again. You get 2 y squared over 2 square root 3. From 0 to h. 2 and 2 cancel out. Eventually, you get h squared over square root 3. That's the cross-section area. OK? You can check by calculating the, the area of the triangle by using the simple geometry equation. You end up with the same answer. OK? Now, once we check the formula 
for calculation of the surface uh, cross section area. Now you have to put it here. We know that once you plug VZ down here, pressure should not be a function of X or Y, right? Pressure is supposed to be equal. Pressure depends on direction in Z direction only. Viscosity, L and H are constant as well. So in here, you basically do the double integration of y minus h, 3x squared minus y squared, dx dy, right, in the same manner. What about the limit of integration? You integrate with respect to x first, what should be the limit? Would it be the same as the limit here? Should it be the same? Think about this. If we have circular pipe and we want to do integration to find average velocity, what do we do? In that case, average velocity should equal to double integration of Vz times R dr d theta, right? This R appears according to the cylindrical coordinate, okay? As long as you have cylindrical coordinate, this R is supposed to be here. The cross-section area will be a double integration of R dr d theta. R starts from zero to capital R. Theta will be zero to two pi, right? If you do integration of this, you get pi r squared. What about integration on the denominator? Would it be the same? Consider the integration limit. Of course, now we do velocity. Right? We try to integrate velocity across the cross-section area. So therefore, you integrate it with respect to r, and you integrate it with respect to angle theta. And you have to cover all the cross-section area. So in this case, you have to integrate from 0 to r and 0 to 2 pi as well. So in similar manner, you have to notice that integration limit on the denominator and denominator are the same. So up here, they're supposed to be the same as well. So here, x supposed to be from 0 to x equal to y over square root 3, and 0 to y equal to h. All right, then divided by h square over square root 3, which is cross-section area that we found earlier. Can you do it yourself regarding integration? I give you maybe five minutes just to see whether you can do it yourself, okay? <coughs> Let me give you a solution then, you can check.
oh yeah, yes, you need two here. According to how we integrate it, you need two. Thank you. Get it? Get the results? One thing is, once you first integrate it with respect to x, this is considered constant. Okay, you don't have to consider this at all. You integrate with respect to this one only. You get x cubed over three, and then y squared minus x. And plug this into here. Okay, you get y here, you get y there, and then you have to multiply by the, this term and integrate it again. Okay? Can I skip the part? Do, you can do the integration yourself? I hope. Second part, the part B of this problem, asking for the force. Question asks, FK acting on BC surface. So basically, we want to calculate the force that liquid acts on this area, on this surface, on the top surface here. Okay? And we know that in order to find force, you need shear stress, because shear stress is the force over area. So essentially, in order to find Fk, you need tau. Okay? But every time we discuss about tau, basically we start with flux and do the balance of the flux, and the tau will be given, or the tau will be obtained. But now, Velocity is given. How can we find velocity? I mean, how can we find tau from velocity? There's only one equation linking tau to velocity. That's Newton law. That's the only equation. Okay? If you want to calculate tau from V, use Newton law. In the same manner, if you want to calculate V from tau in the shear balance, we need to plug in the Newton law as well. Okay? Another question is, there are nine taus, starting from xx, xy, xz, and so on. There are nine of them. Which tau should this one be? Of course, we know that there are two subscripts of tau. The second subscript is supposed to follow the direction of the flow, right? So the flow now is in z direction, so the second subscript is supposed to be z. What about the first subscript? Should it, should it be x or y or z? Which one should it be? <laughs> if you do not know, in this particular problem, actually, you have to imagine, if I say tau xz, what does it mean? It means there are two meanings associated with tau, right? First. It say this is momentum flux. For the velocity, for the z momentum, transferring in x direction. That's the first meaning. Z momentum, transferring in x direction. For the second meanings, 
is a force in Z direction acting on the area and that area is perpendicular to X direction. Okay? So if we look at the force, the force is in the same direction as the flow. So this is supposed to be Z. What about the axis of the surface? X axis is this direction. The area perpendicular to X axis is this area. It's this area, right? So now we're looking for the force acting in this way on this surface. Do we have this surface in our system? What about here? This surface perpendicular to the screen? Do we have tau xz? Can we have momentum transport or z momentum transfer in this direction? This is x direction, right? So this is tau xz transferring from high velocity region in the middle toward the wall. Do we have one? We do. You can see that the area around here is supposed to have higher velocity than, than the area around the wall. So there must be the transfer of z momentum from high velocity region to low velocity region. So tau xz is not zero. Okay? What about tau yz? Is it zero? Same thing. yz supposed to be this direction. This is tau yz from high velocity region toward low velocity region. You should have tau yz as well. Okay? So in this case, there are two of them. According to Newton's law, tau xz is minus mu dvz by dx plus dvx by dz. Okay? While tau yz is minus mu dvz by dy plus dvy by dz. Let me write this down. Okay? Now we know that in this problem, what is Vx? In this problem, if we want to determine velocity component, Vx, Vy, Vz, is Vx zero? Flowing like this, is Vx zero? It is zero. Is Vy zero? It is zero. Vz is not zero. Okay, and you should see that Vz is supposed to be a function of x and y. Because going this way, you have velocity change. Going this way, you have velocity change as well. So Vz is a function of x and y. Okay? So if Vx is 0, this term is 0. Vy is 0, this term is 0. Vz is function of x. Vz is also function of y. These two are not 0. In order to find tau, you just do differentiation. Okay? So if you do differentiation, 
you get minus mu. Everything up front, pressure, 4 mu LH, these are constant, okay? And you differentiate with respect to X, this is considered constant. You have Y minus H here. And then you differentiate with respect to X for this term. You get 2 up front. You get 6X times 6X. Six this is Y. There's no X here. When you differentiate it, it will be 0. Right? So that would be tau XZ. For tau YZ, you differentiate with respect to Y. Of course, everything up front will be constant. Then the first term, you differentiate it with respect to Y. The first term seems to be 1. Okay? No, actually you have to multiply these two together first. Let's say 3x squared y subtract 3x squared h subtracted by y cubed plus y squared h. Okay? So if you differentiate with respect to y, the first term turns to be 3x squared. Second term is 0. There's no y here. Third term, you get minus 3y squared. And then this one you get plus 2hy. Right? That would be tau or momentum flux at any position within the system. But the problem asking for FK, okay? FK on BC surface, that means in BC surface here, it is this surface. That surface is defined by this equation, y equal to x, always, OK? So in this case, tau xz on BC surface, basically you take y equal to x. I'm sorry, not, not y equal to x. This is wrong. Y equal to H. Right? It is constant at H always. So if I take Y equal to H in the first equation, this term will be 0. So you get the first tau XZ on BC surface to be 0. Right? And you should see that tau xz is acting on this plane, this plane. And this plane is perpendicular to BC surface. So the force on this white paper of mine has nothing to do with BC plane at all. So that's why force component from this part is zero on BC surface. Okay? On the other hand, for YZ component on BC surface, you just replace Y by H, and you see that the whole term is not zero. Okay? So you get minus pressure term mu cancel over 4LH inside you get 3x squared 
minus this will be 3h square and 2h square that you give you 1h square as a result right this replaced by h this by h you get 3h square and 2h square these two cancel to get 1h square now you see that this tau is a function of x that means the force acting at different position is not the same okay and if i put negative inside you end up with h square minus x 3x square so force at the middle where x equal to 0 is the strongest okay so if i replace this if i plug this negative sign inside i end up with h square minus 3x square so when x is z 0 this value the maximum okay so the force will be maximum at the center of this area and the force will be lower when you go toward the edge all right now once you get tau yz and you see that tau itself is function of x how can we find force if this tau is a constant in order to find force you just mu multiply by the area but this one is not constant so in order to find force you have to integrate tau okay so basically fk supposed to be integration of tau yz on bc surface with respect to what what would be the integration here we will integrate it on this BC surface so you have to integrate with respect to X to move in this way and integrate with respect to Z this way because we now consider this area right so integration must be respect to DX DZ okay so if I integrate it from the center to, to point C, that means I'm moving from x equal to 0 to x equal to y over square root 3. This is x equal to y over square root 3, where y is equal to h. Right? Understand? We are looking at this line. At this line, we want to integrate from here to there. This location is where x equal to y over square root 3 and y equal to h. Okay? So that's why I put the limit here. For z, you integrate from 0 to l. And remember, now we integrate from x equal to 0. That's the center to here but we need the whole surface so you put two over there okay so basically you just plug this equation here and do integration I give you some time to do it I will give you answer
See, can you do it? Did you get the answer? Okay. Now, you should also realize that force on this BC line, BC surface that we just calculated, should not be the same as force on this AC line. Right? On BC surface, force is a result from tau YZ only because tau XZ is zero. But if you want to calculate force on this inclined plane, you will need both. You have to calculate both force from tau XZ and force from tau YZ and add them together. And they will not be the same as what we just calculated. Okay? But to make the problem a little bit easier for you, The problem asks, if we can assume that the net force is equal to three times Fk on BC surface, okay, so you can neglect the complicated calculation of the inclined plane. So basically the force would be three times this much what would be the friction factor? All right. So in order to find friction factor, you will need only one equation, Fk equal to A kf. Can you try to do it on your own before giving you a solution? The answer is supposed to be 20 over Raynaud number. Can you do it? All right, if you rearrange the equation, you get friction factor equal to Fk over Ak. And Fk is three times of this value. Okay, so three and three cancel out. Over A, what is A? A is wetted area. So that would be the perimeters of this triangle times length. What is the length of this AC line? We know that the angle here is supposed to be 60 degree, right? So AC line is basically edge over sine of 60 degree. In other words, sine 60 degree equal to this AC line over edge. Okay? 
So that would be square root 3. Oh, 2 over square root 3 etched. OK? So we have three sides. Each side is 2 over square root 3 of H times L. That would be weighted area. This is characteristic um, surface area. And then K, which is kinetic energy, 1 over 2 rho V squared. OK? And if you split this V into two terms and take this velocity, average velocity here, down there, so if this will be replaced by pressure difference, H square over 60 mu L of this pressure term, viscosity would be, of vis you have viscosity left and you just eliminate terms that are the same, eventually you end up with 20 mu over rho h v. Okay? And if you define the characteristic length to be h, rho h v over mu, that can be defined as Reynolds number in this particular system and that you end up with 20 over Reno number, okay? Now, there's another way to do the calculation. I did not give you this last time, so let me put this on the time that we have left. The other way to calculate it is called hydraulic radius. Hydraulic radius is defined by the cross-section area divided by the perimeter. Okay? Cross-section area in this particular problem, we already calculated to be h square over square root 3. The perimeter is that 3 times of 2h over square root 3. Eventually, you get h over 6 as a hydraulic radius. And you have learned hydraulic radius in unit operation 1, I believe. OK? This hydraulic radius was defined to be equivalent diameter or equivalent radius of the circular pipe having the same behavior. In that case, if you start looking at the circular pipe, if I have a circular pipe, Okay, I calculate hydraulic radius of circular pipe. Cross section area will be pi r square over perimeter that's two pi r. So at the end, you get r over two. Okay, or diameter over four. So in other words, you get diameter equal to four hydraulic radius for circular pipe. This is actual diameter. This is calculated based on hydraulic radius concept. So that means if you want to equivalent this triangular pipe to be circular pipe, you get diameter of the circular pipe to be four times of hydraulic radius, which is h over six. So that means we want, we will say that the pipe, this actual triangular pipe supposed to have the same phenomena as the circular pipe with the diameter of four times of h over six. All right? 
and then we can plug this into fanning friction factor formula. Earlier, on last week, I gave you one equation called fanning friction factor. So this is F for our triangular pipe. Fanning friction factor was defined based on circular pipe. That is 1 over 4, D over L, pressure difference over 1 over 2 rho V squared. Okay? So if you take diameter calculated based on hydraulic radius here, you get 1 over 4 times 2 over 3 H, 1 over L, and then pressure different. Okay? And if you take this velocity, one of them to be the average velocity that we calculate, you can eliminate most of these terms and end up with the same thing. Okay? So in order to do the calculation for non-circular pipe, you can do like straightforward to get tau, from tau to get fk, from fk you put in fk equal to akf to calculate friction factor, or you can use this equation and approximate diameter of circular pipe using hydraulic radius. However, you have to remember this. This is critical point, okay? In order to use this plus hydraulic radius, to get the correct answer, this is valid only for turbulent flow. The concept of hydraulic radius is valid only for turbulent flow, actually. This particular example gives you equal friction factor by chance. If you look at another system, the calculation in these two ways are not the same. They're not the same. This equation makes everything easy under assumption of turbulent flow. Okay? So if your flow is not turbulent, you get, you get some error. Okay? But it is the first guideline that you can use to make approximation of the friction factor in pipe. Any question? So as I said, we have done everything in the momentum session. On Thursday, we will start on energy session. And next week, I'm sorry to cancel two classes on Tuesday and Thursday next week. The classes will be canceled. A week after that, you get examination, right? So I will see you again after examination. No, Thursday first and then after examination. So we will talk about energy equation briefly and try to finish that before examination. All right, if you have questions, come up and ask. Otherwise, class is dismissed.